So I was listening to a lecture uh, by Elizabeth Vandiver uh, out of the University of Texas, Austin, Texas. And um, it was a lecture from the teaching company on classical mythology. She was discussing myth. And at the same time, I got a PM from a user. It was a hey, Wayman, why do you still like Campbell and Frazier? All these guys are schmucks. They're outdated. And I say, why do you think that? And they write, well, I read a book, and this guy said he was. So he was. And I kind of had a chuckle. Because I know what's wrong with all these guys. Because <laughs> you need a better reason. If you don't like something, uh, then somebody else said that. So that tells me maybe you haven't read the person and you only read the apologist trying to defend that idea and you didn't necessarily even maybe know what the person was about or why that was thought. So I, I decided to come on and do a video about myth and how it's multi-dimensional. It's like a Rubik's Cube. It's all mixed up. The, the different fields, you know, like sociology, uh, psychology, metaphysics, history, all that. Anthropology, all that. So, you have to turn it around and look at it from all sides. So, some, some of the earlier people, like Fraser and, and Strauss, some of the older guys, uh, data collecting was horrible. You know, they, they would get their data from, like, missionaries. And a lot of times, you, you will see um, people asserting their views rather than actually proving it. So if you have a bazillion examples, that doesn't necessarily prove anything. It just proves that you have a lot of material. Um, and a lot of these ideas about myth and, and how it works are hypotheses and theories. So they can be uh, built upon and improved or you know they can be disproved. Uh, so you have the structuralists like uh, Prop and um, uh, he worked in fairy tales. Uh, Walter Burkett, uh, the guy I'm reading right now, worked in Greek religion, mostly concerned with rituals. So where Prop uh, Valdemir Prop was more concerned with the cultural, only in one culture, Russian folk tales. Uh, and Walter Burkett uh, was uh, concerned with ritual and mostly with Greek culture. Uh, you get somebody uh, like Fraser, who's, who's like a structuralist. Uh, and Prop was a structuralist too, uh, collecting things and putting things in orders and uh, one of Prop's books is the Morphology of the Folktale. It's a very good book if you can pick it up. Breaks it down into different structures. Um, then you have uh, sociologists, psychologists, like Freud, and Jung, and then Jung and Campbell were adding metaphysics to, to the idea of it. And then uh, uh, Robertson Smith, he's an early guy, wrote on, uh, did a comparison on sacrifice. He was a biblical scholar. So there's all these different fields uh, bound up into the mythic uh, field or idea. So everybody has their views. Campbell popularized it. He, he, made it go full-blown. Um, and Campbell told each person that they were a part of it, which was huge. And people never thought of myth, maybe, in such a way. But what Campbell does is he'll take different similarities from all different cultures and assert assert 
that they mean the same in all these different cultures, uh, and they necessarily uh, do not. So, so, so that's the thing with Campbell. But uh, his knowledge about the myths and uh, about the cultures is top notch. Uh, but the way maybe that he, he applies it uh, is not. So you cannot simply assert, you, you kind of like have to prove it. You know, I don't care how much you know, how many examples you got, um, but if it's just a few and it hasn't been proven, and, and these types of things are really hard to nail down. So uh, they're very good to think about. The structuralist idea is very good to think about. Sociological, anthropological views, uh, really good to think about. Ritualistic views, really good to think about. So you have to get the multi-dimensional idea. What a lot of anti-theists and, and, and atheists will do, uh, will pull um, myths cross-culturally and compare them to, say, Judaism and Christianity to just prove something or to put it on the same level with. Because everybody culturally likes to build up their own belief system and hold it to the highest. Uh, so, that idea isn't necessarily uh, correct. So, if we were comparing, say, uh, Athena and Ishtar, uh, those two goddesses, even though they have a lot of similarities, they have some uh, things that aren't similar. Dissimilar, maybe? So, uh, same thing with, with Hera and Ishtar, or same thing with the idea of Ishtar and the Virgin Mary, or uh, whatever a goddess or deity you want to compare. So even though these cultures did, in, in fact, influence one another, uh, whether it's the Jungian view uh, of the archetype, or uh, through trade, multiculturalism, these elements were taken from the different cultures, processed, regurgitated into something that they could understand, and that process turned into ritual, which gave the symbol or the idea numinosity and potency. So uh, the comparisons will be there. They'll look the same, but they're going to mean two different things in each of the cultures. Uh, so I find it interesting that uh, Young, in a lot of his research, says dream is a personal thing. Uh, you have a lot of these same images coming up, but they mean different. There's something different to each individual. Same with myth. Uh, our experiences experience of the society, um, the um, influences of society uh, change those symbols into something different, maybe, maybe something totally different than the society that they borrowed it from. Uh, and, and what's interesting is the Romans uh, used to pride themselves on how well they copied societies. Uh, we, we don't like to think that today because we're all worried about assimilation and we're, we're terribly afraid of assimilation. But uh, if, you, if you ever see uh, Plutarch's writings and the uh, writings on the Greeks and Romans, uh, that was simply a comparison of Roman uh, uh, heroes and leaders compared with Greek heroes and leaders. And... Um, it was quite interesting. So, so, the, so the Romans prided themselves on being multicultural. Today we can speak about it, but really we like to be fiercely uh, separate and independent and afraid of anything that comes in from the outside. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it can benefit a culture, Sometimes it can ruin a culture. Uh, 
uh, kind of like the forced assimilation of the Native Americans here in the U.S., uh, the forced assimilation policies. Forced assimilation is always damaging uh, to a culture. So that's just some of my views. Take care, friends. And remember, if everybody's thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking.